Eight miles off the coast. Nine miles off the coast. Ten miles. Oh. It's very fast. Thirteen hundred miles an hour and accelerated. Fourteen. Fifteen hundred miles an hour. Fifteen miles from Kennedy Space Center. Wow. This is very nice. Lunch America. Twenty-six miles. Twenty-seven miles. It's incredible, eh? Three thousand miles an hour. My gosh, how they can do that? The pressure. There's, there's not as much atmospheric pressure on it, so that's why it expands out right now. And we are getting wow. another 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Oh my gosh, 50 miles in two minutes. <laughs> Jesus. My goodness, how they can survive? It's very fast. They are, they are coming? Still accelerating. Wow. They are They're dropping stage one. Wow. This is completely... Incredible, wow. Look, two guys. Two guys inside. Wow. Altitude's 111 miles. My goodness, look. That means that's good news. That's the rocket that's still on the ground. It's doing its job, moving these guys. Wow. About 200 kilometers below the space station. And you uh, can actually see that second photo. It's great to see inside. There's a triple screen of the two astronauts. This is really uh, incredible. The, the Dragon and the Falcon are basically, and actually it's the second stage now, are on autonomous power. But Chris, we really want to pay attention to that first stage. As Davenport says, it's a secondary mission, but it sure is cool. They cannot feel the pressure inside. Wow. It's really amazing, yeah. Want to bring in Mike Massimino. Mike, take us through what Bob and Doug are going through. They are so well trained uh, for this, uh, Chris. They've had countless simulations, played everything, every emergency possible. They're just looking and looking and hoping and hoping and praying that everything's going well. It looks like it is. I know that first stage, we're going to be excited to see that, but the world is halfway there. Just making sure that that engine is completely burned, that they're still on their, the right trajectory. All the systems are looking good, and it looks like they are. As, as we see them just watching, that's probably a good sign. That means all the automatic uh, sequences are working well. We don't hear too much chatter going from the control center from MCC. Oh my God. That's a good thing, too. Almost to 10 minutes. Yeah, we hear that word nominal. Go ahead, Mike, I'm sorry. When you hear that word nominal coming, no, it's fine. When you hear wow. that word nominal, that's always good. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's the NASA jargon for everything. It's A-OK. -okay. We're looking good, just like we expect. So. We want to keep hearing that for a few more minutes and get those engines cut and get them in space safely. And there's that 10,000 kilometers per hour threshold, which is just over 6,200 miles per hour. And the picture wow. on the right, I have to keep reminding myself that that's a live shot. It looks like the greatest science fiction movie ever produced. It's just so fantastic that the launch was a go today and has been a success so far. Really, really amazing stuff. David Curley, what's the feeling like on the ground? Are you seeing the oh, first gosh. stage rocket at all coming back? Not yet. You can see it. Uh, it's got about another three minutes until it'll do its entry burn, and that's 
There are nine Merlin rocket engines right, on them. Uh, they are saying everything is normal with their trajectory, meaning they're heading onto the right path to try and get on the effort to catch up to the space wow. station. Wow. So you're seeing in the first stage, you can see those grid fins that you mentioned, Chris Jacobs, that will help guide it. Uh, but at 8.45, so plus 8.45, coming up in about two minutes, you'll see three of those nine engines fire to slow it down. The first stage doesn't have any of that protection when it comes back into the atmosphere. So they, the way they overcome that is by firing the engines and slowing it down enough that when it re-enters the atmosphere, it won't burn up. And it'll be a 34 second burn of that entry stage of those three engines to bring us in. And seeing some of these pictures of Doug and Bob in the capsule uh, is just remarkable. It, uh, we haven't seen a lot of uh, American yeah, astronauts on it. It's still good. And just wow. to clarify, that picture on the left is the stage Amazing. two rocket propelling the Crew Dragon capsule. The picture on the right is actually the stage right. one Falcon right. 9 right. rocket returning to Earth. So those are actually moving in opposite directions as we pass the 15,000 kilometers per hour mark, wow. which is approaching 9,400 miles per hour. My goodness. You know, Chris, SpaceX would love to get this uh, booster back. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, they learn a lot when they get these rockets back and take a look at them. But it is secondary. That's the picture on your left. The second stage, as Massimino said, that's what you want to burn. You want that burn to go exactly as it should on the right trajectory. This was an instantaneous loss. Launch, they had to go at the right time. There's your start your entry burn on the right. It's, it's, right. Right. it's, right. it's a little bit early. But it's normal. Right. Falcon 9 rocket. It's so this is the part of this. My gosh. Yeah, this slows it down. This will go on for about 35 seconds, as I mentioned, just to slow it down. And if you watch those grid fins, you can start to see them kind of move. And that's what keeps this, as we heard earlier in one of the pieces, you know, putting a, landing a pencil, that's what keeps it uh, north and south or up and down as it's coming down back in, into land. And, and it's landing at that drone ship saw in this land to start to move. Oh my gosh. Nearly so that burn is over. The next thing we're going to see. Colonel Guy. We will see that at 927. In fact, Carl Everything's good, they say. That's what. Those are the reports from Mission Control. So coming up in about a minute, we'll see the final burn. And uh, as Davenport has told us before, uh, you don't always get to see the landing because. Uh, you know, you got a camera that's getting shaken, and, you know, this is a rocket, actually, that's coming back to, <laughs> or you lost the picture. That's that's kind of what happens. And there's the 25,000 kilometers per hour, which is 15,534 miles per hour. So, again, continue to accelerate as they make their way to Florida. And back there, almost done. And back shut down. There's the second stage engine cutoff right there. And that would be just yeah, good news, Chris. That means that, uh, that it means that they've got right, their, uh, the there they go. That's great news. Wow. And that's even better news. So they're in the orbit they're supposed to be in. They have just de, de armed the escape system. They are where they're supposed to be at the right time. And in a couple of minutes, we will see the separation of the dragon okay. and loss okay. of that. Uh, second stage. That's really good news. And Chris, you asked a little bit about the atmosphere down here. There were some people here, even though they didn't open the gates, who were applauding as that Falcon 9 took off and uh, really yeah. ran yeah. And they are working inside. And there's like stage one that landed the on the bar. Yeah. To that drone trip, ship. Just amazing, amazing it's technology. It's amazing, yeah. That, that quickly, under 10 minutes, that Falcon 9 rocket has propelled Doug, Doug and Bob into orbit and has returned safely to its wow. trip. I mean, hats off to SpaceX for developing that technology. Look inside. There's, they're working. Now, Mike Massimino, if you'd like to Sorry, weigh in, at, 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 if you'd like to weigh in at this stage, Mike Massimino, Bob and Doug now, you can see they're experiencing weightlessness. They're breaking mm. up their uh, mementos that they brought from home. What are they experiencing right now? Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit, and I'm very happy for them. Uh, this is uh, great coverage. Those cameras we have, that's another uh, advancement. We didn't have those cameras in the shuttle program. We had, like, it's called a lipstick camera. One camera we mount on the back of one of the flight engineers, and that's all you had. Now we've got them all over the vehicle, inside the cabin, outside, on the rocket. It's just a wonderful experience we all can share. And 
but they are feeling utter joy. They are euphoric. They are sublime. They are really happy that they got through that launch system, uh, through that launch sequence. They're really happy to be wow. uh, in orbit and, and to bring the United States back. Both of these guys are military officers. Bob from the Air Force, Doug and Marine, they are so happy to have done this from American soil again. It's a great day, not just for the United States, but for the whole world, to have the capability to launch from the U.S. again with people. And so oh, and they are just so proud and so grateful that so many people made this possible for them to be a part of. And so they're happy that they're there. And they're proud of being on the team. And they are very, very grateful for what, what we've done today. We are, and all of us can be proud of what we've done. Mike, just 11 and a half minutes into their 19 hour journey. So a lot longer to go before they reach the ISS. What do they do now for the next 18 hours and 50 minutes? My gosh. Yeah, they get ready. Uh, you know, they have to transfer uh, to an orbital stage. We used to call it post insertion. I'm sure they call it the same thing. There's usually no rest for the weary. There's plenty of things to do. They're going to have to set up uh, their cockpit so they can get ready to.